Welcome to the Fab Lab Digital Daycare, everybody. Thank you so much for sticking around. We had a little bit of audio issues, but in the land of live stream, if it's not problematic, then it's not fun, right? <laughs> I'm Crazy Aunt Lindsay, and you are in the Fab Lab Digital Daycare. I'm so excited for today's project. We're gonna wrap up yesterday's project and then get to a new one. As always, this awesome, very special live stream event is brought to you in collaboration with my friend Nisha at Bajika Lab in Boston, MIT in Boston. So hello to her. I hope your live stream went awesome this morning. And I can't go any further without saying a huge shout of thanks to my two of my favorite Portland local female founded businesses, Living Room Realty for giving the Fab Lab a home to come to you live, as well as, of course, Rain the Growth Agency. Thank you so much for being our awesome media partner. Okay. So, as I said, we're gonna wrap up today's project. I already washed my hands. If you have not washed your hands yet, please run and do that now. We will take a quick second so that you can wash your hands with some of our favorite songs. We're gonna go to that right now. Go wash your hands. <laughs> Wash your hands and don't touch your face. Are your hands clean? Awesome, because like I said, with our clean hands, we're gonna finish up our super clean chemistry project that we started yesterday. Yesterday, we used chemistry. I hope that you can see this in the top down shot. Uh, we used chemistry to make really awesome Fab Lab dishwasher and toilet bowl blasters. It's a chemical reaction between citric acid and sodium bicarbonate. Uh, and we put them in our, our cute little muffin tins so that we can gift them to our friends. So we let them dry overnight. If you missed yesterday's project, the replay is on YouTube right now. So if I were you, I would leave this live. I would go to yesterday's awesome episode and learn how to make these Fab Lab bombs, these Fab Lab uh, dishwasher and toilet bowl blasters. Okay, uh, so we're just gonna finish up by getting them out of the muffin tins and then packaging them up for storage and for gifting. So all you're going to need is a plate. In this case, I'm gonna use just a pretty, a simple um, cutting board. Like I said, they've been drying in here overnight and it's gonna be a little hard to take them out. So we're just gonna give them a quick little whack so I'm gonna put my cutting board or my plate, whatever you have handy, over my tin. I'm gonna flip it. And then I know that this is the general area that the blasters were set. So I'm just gonna take my spoon and give it a little whack. That's not too bad on the audio. This is like an instrument. I kind of wanna... It's not a good song. <laughs> Let's see if they're gonna come off. So I'm just gonna lift my muffin tin. Oh yeah, most of them are out. Most of them came off. I'm just gonna do a really quick smack. Those ears are sensitive. Oh gosh. Now I'm gonna lift them off and see how many came out. All right, not too many. Let's see if I can twist them out. Ugh, they're stuck in there. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine either way. I bet you I could get them out though. Yep. Got three more. dishwasher blasters. All you're going to do is pop these into your dishwasher and start your dishwasher or pop them into the toilet. Let them fizz and then you scrub and that's it. We'll do a quick 
little demonstration. I'm gonna grab a Fab Lab bowl. Actually, you know what? I'll grab this one because the color will be helpful for you. I'm just gonna get some quick water. So just you stay here and I'll go over here and I'm gonna do a quick demonstration right here. So hopefully you can see this in my overhead, in my bowl. I'm gonna grab one of my toilet bowl blasters. And again, this is citric acid, baking soda, and a little bit of Castile soap, but you can use dishwasher fluid. And I'm gonna drop it into my toilet. And look at all that magical fizz. Do you see all the beautiful magical fizz? That's what's gonna happen in your toilet. This chemical reaction that's releasing all of these cleaning agents and enzymes that are gonna go into the toilet or into your dishwasher and wash all the dishes, clean all of the gunk, all of the bacteria, all the stuff from the inside of your toilet bowl. By the time this is done fizzing, you can either give it a quick brush, but you don't even have to do that. You can just give it a flush and your toilet bowl is completely clean. So this is a super awesome Fab Lab chemical reaction. I'm gonna set this to the side and let that keep fizzing in the bowl. I'm gonna package these for my home use. I'm just gonna grab an airtight container. Just a, one of my favorite things in the world, a mason jar, I love this blue color. And I'm just gonna plop these in and this will be how I store them at home. But because I haven't been able to see as many of my neighbors as I like to see, I'm going to gift a few of them. So this, I'm gonna fill this jar and then leave it right by my sink and use them whenever I need to run the dishwasher. But I also have been spending the last couple of days in the coloring corner here on the Fab Lab, coloring these beautiful little gift boxes. So I'm going to take one of the gift boxes that I'm not quite finished coloring yet, but that's okay. I just wanna show you how I'm going to use these. And I'm gonna fold up my gift box that I've been spending some time coloring. And I'm gonna tape the inside. I'm gonna tape the inside like so. doorstep with maybe a little bow or a little sticker on it that says thinking of you or from crazy aunt Lindsay and I'm gonna leave it for them and they'll know my friends will know that I'm thinking about them because I have so much time on my hands all I do all day long is craft and make and bake and craft and science and stem and all the fun stuff okay so that wraps up yesterday's project I can't wait to see how your fab lab blasters came out and who you give them to or how you use them in your own home awesome now on to today's project. Not sure if you know this, but March, of course, is Women's History Month. And this month, I love to celebrate all of the fantastic women that have come in and out of STEM throughout history to pave the way, make incredible discoveries, and just be amazing sisters in STEM. So to celebrate, I'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite people to one of my most huge inspirations. This particular uh, project is brought to you in partnership with PDX, excuse me, women, PDX Women in Technology. They have been fantastic uh, sisters in STEM of mine over the past several years. And I'm really excited to bring you this really awesome profile of one of my favorite inspiring women. So we're gonna talk about an incredible astronaut named Mae Jameson, and we're gonna find out why she is so special. Vocabulary. 
An astronaut is someone that's trained to command, pilot, or serve as a crew member aboard a spacecraft. They can be scientists, teachers, mechanics, or even dogs, rabbits, and monkeys. And that is part of what makes Miss Jameson so special. She is the first black woman to ever go to space. Mae Jameson was born in Decatur, Alabama on October 17, 1956. She was the youngest child of a maintenance engineer dad and a English and math teaching mom. Her parents were super passionate about education. And when they left when she was around three years old to live in Chicago, it's there that May fell in love with science. She became interested in the world around her and asked a bunch of questions. As a matter of fact, it's said that when she was about five years old, she got an infected splinter in her thumb and her mom made such a cool project out of it that she ended up doing an entire presentation on pus. Gross. As a matter of fact, May was kind of a child genius and ended up entering Stanford University at the age of 16. And despite the fact that some of her professors were super mean to her because, well, she's black and a woman, she left with a degree in chemical engineering and went straight to Cornell Medical College and got her MD. After a bit of time in the Peace Corps, she applied not once, but twice to the space program, and in 1987, she was accepted. May went up in 1992 aboard the Endeavor doing bone cell research experiments. May Jameson is our inspiration for the Fab Lab Star Jars and Constellation Mobiles. Woo! Woo! <laughs> That's a cute story. And I see you have met my dear friends, Cash and Rocket, who are gonna help us walk through this project today. So I'm super stoked for you to have met them already. So Mae Jameson is such an incredible lady and I'm so excited for today's project that is fully inspired by her. Today's project is an astronomy project. So let's hear more about what astronomy is. And when we come back, we'll walk you through today's project. Vocabulary. Astronomy is the natural science that studies the sun, moon, stars, planets, comets, galaxy, gas, dust, all of the things that make up the physical universe in space. It involves math, physics, and chemistry to help us explain the origin of these objects and their development over time, also known as evolution. Alrighty. So astronomy is an incredible, incredible science and one of my favorites actually. And this project is going to be a mix between an understanding of, of some aspects of astronomy as well as a celebration of one of my favorite inspiring women in STEM, Mae Jameson. Today we're going to make Fab Lab Star Jar Nightlights. I love this project because it is so simple and it has so many wings. You can gift this project as with most projects in the Fab Lab, or you can set it in your bedroom or even in the bathroom, just in case you're a little bit afraid to move around when it's super dark at night. This project is super fun, very personal, and very fabulous. Okay, so all you need for this project is a container. As always, I love my mason jars and I love my blue one because it kind of reminds me of a night sky. So I'm gonna take my mason jar and I'm gonna open it up. To make a super simple version of this project, all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to grab some Christmas lights, some battery operated Christmas lights. I'm missing my pop light. If anybody has the eyes on my pop light, that would be great. Uh, probably over by my bag. Uh, sorry guys, I lost, lost one of my ingredients. For this first project, if for the super simple version, all I'm gonna do is grab a battery operated Christmas light Sometimes uh, you can get these, you can get these pretty much any time of year, but it's usually, you can find, usually find them at the hardware store. I find, found mine at the hardware store, thank you. I found mine at the hardware store um, and even in the hardware section sometimes or the seasonal section of your local uh, grocery store or even your local pharmacy. I know Walgreens sometimes will have these stashed in the back somewhere. So all I'm gonna do to make my star jar is take my battery operated lights, pop it in, make sure it goes to the bottom, 
And then to make it easier to get it in, I just wrapped it around my hand. Um, and actually I might do this a little bit backwards. I wrapped it around my hand and stuff it in. And as you stuff it in, you wanna just kind of unravel it to make this fun, pretty jar of lights. And it looks so beautiful on any dresser, on just about any bathroom counter. It's super easy to do. And it just takes two things that you probably have on hand. You could even use regular, um, you could even use regular lights, Christmas lights that you have to plug into the wall. You would just have to maybe not put the top on your mason jar for using a mason jar. So. I'm just gonna move it around in there so that it looks nice. At night, you won't be, be able to see the battery pack, which is exactly what you want because it's so dark. All you'll see are the pretty lights shining. And here is star jar number one. So sweet, so easy. Any kid could do it. Doesn't require a whole bunch of stuff, but a battery and a jar or any airtight container. You could even get creative with it. Get creative with it. I'd love to see how, what you do with this. My next project is a little bit more involved. So I'm gonna take out this, turn it off, and set these to the side. And I'm going to make a personalized Constellation Star Jar Nightlight. And all I'm gonna need for this is my jar and some good old aluminum foil. You could use, in the original Fab Lab project, we used a tin pan, a, re, a uh, disposable tin pan for this project, but I find the tin pan to be a little bit dangerous <laughs> for kids because it's so stiff. The aluminum foil itself is so stiff and so sharp uh, that you really have to hack at it. I've done this project, uh, I tested this project with aluminum foil and it worked out perfectly. So all you'll need for this project is some aluminum foil. And what you wanna do is take your jar and measure the circumference of your jar and just kind of roll it in the, in the aluminum foil like so. Perfect. And then you could grab some scissors if they're nearby. Of course, our Fab Lab scissors are always never far. And just cut your aluminum foil or tear it. Aluminum foil is very easy to handle. It can be a little tricky sometimes because it's so flimsy, but it's perfect for this project for that reason. And we're just gonna, just to the top of the jar, perfect. And I'm gonna set my jar to the side and I'm gonna finish cutting my aluminum foil that has been measured to the circumference of the jar. Perfect. I'm gonna set my excess aluminum foil to the side. I'm gonna set my scissors to the side. Perfecto, nice. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my aluminum foil into a personalized constellation. In the Fab Lab original project, we did our astrological signs. And astrology is a sort of pseudoscience that looks at where the stars are and sometimes relate it, relates it to personality types of people based on when they were born. Uh, astrology and astronomy are very, very closely related. Astrology in some cases are, is older than the science of astronomy. Um, but we're going to stick to science science. And so we're going to personalize it with, uh, with our favorite constellations. And I'm going to tell you right now what a constellation is. Vocabulary. A constellation is a collection of stars that make an imaginary shape in the sky and are usually named after mythological characters, people, animals, and objects. For more than 6,000 years, poets, farmers, and astronauts have used them to tell stories, navigate the sky, and to help time out planting and harvesting seasons. Alrighty, so constellations are beautiful. At night when the stars are out, now that because of us, because so many of us 
have been uh, in isolation, not driving cars. A lot of buildings are closed, so there's not as much light pollution in certain parts of the country where it would usually be harder to see the stars at night. Tonight, when the sun goes down, I want you to pop outside onto your front lawn, uh, a, your, a sidewalk, maybe you can do this as a neighborhood, or head upstairs to your rooftop or your uh, fire escape and see if you can see the stars that you maybe weren't able to see before. If you live in big, wide open spaces, you are, you're already privy, privy to seeing these beautiful, gleaming um, stories in the sky. So I would love for you to go outside and find a few yourself. And to help you, I have my Fab Lab Marshmallow Constellation Guide, uh, which is a printable that I offer for another project, but we're gonna use this to guide, uh, to guide this next step of our of our star jar nightlight project. So I'm gonna take a look at my Fab Lab constellation guide and pick my favorite one. Let's see. My favorite is Cassiopeia. Just because I like to say the word Cassiopeia. It's the first one on the constellation guide. Uh, and also if your parents are not already signed up for the nightly newsletter, the digital daycare nightly newsletter, make sure that they're signed up because this will be in tonight's newsletter for you to print out and use for any project that you like, including a marshmallow constellation or to help guide you in your constellation star jar. Okay, so I'm gonna use this and I'm going to set this down next to my aluminum foil. And my aluminum foil is gonna go into my star jar like this. Actually, before I move forward, I'm just gonna make sure that it's the right size. I can I could stand to use about a about two inches off the top because all I'm going to do with my foil is roll it up when I'm done and slip it into the jar like this. Once it's in the jar, you can reshape it. I'm just gonna make sure that it's gonna work out. You can reshape it once it's in there. Okay, so this is gonna be perfect, awesome. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, because I know I wanna put my aluminum foil in like this, I'm going to lay my foil long ways. And then the next thing I'm going to do, of course, what we love doing in the Fab Lab, drawing and coloring. So you can grab a Sharpie or a pen. You can also freehand this. If you want, you could even do the trick that we did last week where we made our banana secret messages. And you could just write your name. You could write any message that you want. I want to do a constellation. So I'm going to do Cassiopeia. All I'm going to do is hand draw Cassiopeia. And Cassiopeia is one, two, three, four, five stars. So what I'm going to do right now is draw Cassiopeia. There's one star here. And then there's another one here. And then there's another one just about over here. Boop, 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 boop. And then another one up here-ish. Boop, 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 boop. And then one over here. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. And then I'm just going to draw a line to connect them just to make sure it's kind of accurate. <laughs> here in the Fab Lab, it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be fabulous. Okay. So here is my Cassiopeia. Awesome. And like I said, you could do any constellation that you like. You can Google it online and do your own, uh, your own astrological sign. I am a Gemini, Cash is a Cancer, Rocket is a Virgo. So in our original project, we used our astrological signs. In this case, because I'm celebrating Mae Jameson, an astronaut, and I'm celebrating uh, these super clear skies that big, city, big cities are finally um, uh, able to see, I'm going to do a star constellation that I'm gonna try and find tonight when I go to bed before I go to bed. Okay, so here is my Cassiopeia that's drawn on my aluminum foil. Next, I'm going to use just 
a takeout because I've been eating a heck of a lot of takeout the last couple of weeks. I'm going to grab um, a clean uh, chopstick from one of my takeout nights. Uh, and I'm just going to poke a hole in my hand drawn constellation. Nice. I'm gonna poke a larger hole in my hand-drawn constellation. I'm gonna be very careful. I'm gonna do my best to be gentle. It's just aluminum foil, so if you make a mistake, you could even just fold, fold it back and start again. Uh, you could use another piece, but save this for another project. There are tons of things in the Fab Lab we're gonna do this week that require aluminum foil. So if you make mistakes, that's okay. Just make sure you're saving, uh, saving what you got on hand. Okay, so here I'm poking holes with my Fab Lab chopstick. <laughs> Great. So here is my constellation. This is my Cassiopeia constellation that you can't really see too good just yet because it's out like this. But the next thing I'm going to do is grab a toothpick and I'm going to poke smaller holes. So. In my aluminum foil for my star jar, my big, my big holes that I poked with my chopstick are going to be my main stars of my constellation, which again, I'm doing Cassiopeia. And now my little toothpick holes are going to be all the other stars that are in the sky. So you can just spend a little time poking holes, smaller holes in your aluminum foil all around your constellation or even your name. You could tap your name. You could poke your name into a piece of aluminum foil. If you do have a disposable, uh, a disposable tin pan on hand, you could use that with parental supervision to make your night sky for your star jar. So I'm just poking holes in my aluminum foil. These are gonna be my little stars. And I'm just going all around, all around my aluminum foil, all the way to the end. Holding it up every now and then, just to see if there are any spots that need to be poked in. And these are stars. Does anybody know what a star is? It's a giant flaming ball of gases that are glowing in the sky. So I'm just poking away. If you're poking with me, I would love to see your final project. Have your parents hit me up on Instagram at the Fab Lab HQ. I would love to see your projects. If you check out my Instagram right now, you'll see a couple of our friends, a couple of our Fab Lab professors and friends from all around the country, from right here in Portland, Oregon, all the way down to Mexico City, where they're watching uh, yesterday's cooking segment and doing the workout. That's on my live right now, or excuse me, that's on my Instagram stories right now. So there are kids all over the country that are watching with you right now and playing along. So even if you're not hanging out with your friends from school, you can know that you're hanging out with hundreds of thousands of people all over the world that are watching this show and doing this project with you. Okay, so this is pretty good. This looks pretty good. I've been poking for a while. Again, here's my main constellation, Cassiopeia. And all I'm gonna do now is roll this up. and I'm gonna stick it in my jar. I'm gonna roll it a little bit smaller than the jar's mouth. And then when it's in, I'll unravel it and you'll, I'll show you just to make it easier. So this makes it e easier to get in. Now that it's down in there, I'm just going to unravel it. Awesome. And I can see my Cassiopeia right here. Awesome. Now I'm going to grab a very simple pop light. This is about 
I don't even know, 99 cents and it came in a pack of two in my local dollar store and it comes with the batteries. It's just a battery operated pop light situation, which all alone makes a great night light for closets or whatever it is. Um, but what, or a little, I keep this particular one next to my bed for nighttime reading. And all you do is pop it on and pop it off, up, pop off, pop it on. So to turn this into a nightlight, I'm just gonna pop it down. Oops. <laughs> it turned off. Hold on. Gotta fix the battery. Dollar store goodies, you know how it goes. Oh, did I break my pop light? I think I broke my pop light. Oh, I did not break my pop light. Just the battery had to get fixed, like I thought. We'll see what happens next. Should work. Okay. Well, there we go. So I'll pop this down. If it turns off again, just use your imaginations. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I got it in that time. And I'm gonna close it up. And then when it when you're in the dark, you'll be able to see your glowing constellation inside of your star jar. I'll have some photos for up for you on my Instagram and on my Facebook tonight. But you can just use your imagination. When it's dark, you can see this so beautifully. You can see your constellation. It's absolutely great. And it makes the perfect nightstand, dresser, bathroom nightlight ever. I absolutely love this project. And make sure again that you are signing up for the Fab Lab nightly newsletter. <laughs> well, you will be able to get tonight's printable, uh, today's printable for uh, different constellations, but you can also find constellations if you just Google them. There are so many awesome resources on the internet. I will make sure that some of those resources for astronomy, uh, excuse me, astrology signs are also included in tonight's nightly newsletter for you guys. I'm so excited about this particular project. And now what time is it for? Yes, it is just about time for active hour here in the Fab Lab Digital Daycare. So I'm going to clean this project up and I'll meet you with Coach Ace in the Fab Lab Active Hour coming up next. <laughs> Everybody, wash your hands to the beat. Wash your hands, everybody. Wash your hands with me. First, put the water on hot. Hot. Put some soap on your hands. On your hands. Gotta wash your hands a whole lot. Whole lot. Keep a clean hands is the plan. That's plan. Now rinse them. Give them a shake. Do the shake. Dry your hands. I said dry your hands. Wash your hands and don't touch your face. All right, Fab Labbers, welcome to another wonderful active hour where we're going to get our bodies moving and we're going to take up the tempo just to burn a little bit of sweat and just to burn off a little bit of steam and get some of that energy directed into warming up our body. We get ready to start it out. We shake out our left arm just to get our bodies nice and warmed up. Make it nice and big. Remember, we're always smiling, we're always moving, and we're always having a good time. Take it to the left side of your arm. Slowly start to shake it out. We do both of them this time around just to give them a little bit of shake. Take it to that left side of that right side of that leg, shake it all the way out. And then we take it to that left side of the leg and we shake it out. We start with some big jumps just to slowly get our heart rate going and just to let our bodies know that we are remembering that we're moving. Move it all the way to the back and then slowly make your way back up to the front. One more time, take it all the way to the back and then slowly make your way back to that front. From there, we let our legs come to a stop. We make big circles today. We want to warm up our shoulders by rotating our arms all the way back and giving it a nice big flare as we make those big circles, almost like we're circling around something. From here, reverse that order. Make it nice and big as you rotate those arms all the way to the front this time around. Nice and easy, remembering it's all good. And then from there, we make it a nice and slow motion. Taking your palms up towards the ceiling, rotate them down. Rotate them back up. Rotate them down every single time you rotate them up. 
you slowly take your time to twist and bring them all the way back down. Taking those same arms, we go across to your body, opening it up just a little bit more. Let your arms come back, tap the back sides of your back or the upper parts of your shoulder, and we hold on to what we got every single time. From there, take that right leg, put it in that hand, drive it all the way up, hold nice and steady, flex that toe up towards the ground. We hold for four, three, two, and one. Lift down, take it to the opposite side. Bring it all the way up. Let that leg hold for four, three, two, and one. From there, you take the same leg, put it in your hand, pull that heel to the back of your butt, stand up nice and straight, rotate those shoulders back. We hold for four, three, two, and one. Swap out that leg this time around. Take that left leg all the way up. Let that knee come in nice and tight. Don't let it flare out today. We hold for four, three, two, and one. Nice and easy. Take those arms up. Give me a nice big bend in those knees. Drive those arms all the way up. And then we slowly let them come down today. We're going to get into our workout today. We've got 16 big movements coming your way. We're going to start out with that first one. We got high knee hops coming your way. Just like what we did in that warm up, we're going to take it there one more time. This time around, we bring that knee up. And from there, switch it out. Hop that knee over. Swap it out. And then we slowly bring it back. Use your arms this time. Make it a nice big movement. If you want to take it to a lateral jump across the floor, add that to it. We speed it up just a little bit. I'm going to count you in for 10 seconds, and then we'll move on to the next exercise. Looking alive. We've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, there you go, 4, 3, 2, and one, nice good job. Give yourself a round of applause. We've knocked out number one. We continue to keep moving. Remember, we got 16 movements today, that's one. We move on to number two. We're gonna take it right to a burpee. I'll give you a quick demo and then we're gonna jump into it together. Feet are shoulder width apart. Take your hands up toward the sky, jump them back. Shoot your legs back. We pop it up, we come to a stand. You add a short jump to the end of that. We're gonna take it right to 10 of those. We go on the count together, we make it look good. Remember to smile. Remember to have a good time while you're moving. Take those hands up, drop them back, kick it back, hop it up, that's one, let's go. Take it back, hop it up, two, nicely done. Shoot it back, drive it up, three, there you go. Drive it back, four, five, halfway, six, seven, there you go. Eight, two more to go. Nine, working on that last one, drop it back, bring it up, and explode up towards the sky. Nicely done. Second round of applause. Shake it up, we keep moving. We're gonna take it to a nice, simple calf raise. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn sideways in the room, face the opposite wall. Take both feet, get them shoulder width apart. All we're gonna do is ease up on the balls of our feet, lifting those heels off the ground. Remember, we take it all the way back. If you wanna add your arms for a little bit more of a stretch, take it up and then slowly let it down. We take it to 10 of those. We have a good time. We move on to the next one, and we keep rolling. Stand feet shoulder width apart. We get ready to take it up as one big group. Drive it all the way up. That's one. Slowly letting it come back down. Bring it up again. Ease into it. Two. Take it back down. Drive it all the way up. There you go. Big movement. Three. Take it down. We've got seven more to go. Bring it all the way up. Up on the balls of those feet. Hold it. That's four. Take it down. We drive it all the way back up. One big one. Five. Nice. I see you out there. Halfway. Drive it up. One more time. That's six. Nice. Take it down. Drive it all the way back up one more time. Seven. Looking good. Take it down. We've got two more to go. Drive it up for eight. Wonderful. Drive it up. We ease up into number nine. Take it up. And then slowly come down. On this last one, we're going to hold a little bit longer. I'll count us out for ten seconds. Drive it up. We've got ten. Hold. Nine, you got it. Eight, seven, look alive. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let it down. Nice job, Fab Labbers. We'll continue to go. Coach Ace is still taking you through this. We're going to move into number four this time around. We're going to take it down to hands and knees. Take all your hands, stack them up just like a nice and even tabletop. Pretend you're a table. Let your neck and head drop down from here. We make a little bit of a movement up. We're going to take our right knee and right hand, move it forward. We're going to take our right knee and right hand, step it back. Take your left knee, left hand, drive it forward, 
take it all the way back the same way. And now this time around, we're gonna do five of those. Make them big, make them nice and explosive, almost like you're a bear crawling through the wilderness. And then if you want to, you can even growl with it as you take it all the way up. High plank, bring it up from here. Nice and easy, step forward. Nice, from here, move it all the way back. Keep that core nice and tight. We drive that other arm forward. Nice and easy, move it back, that's five and five. Take it to the opposite side. Four on your right side. Move it back, you've got four left on your left side. Move it back, you've got three on your right side. Move it back, nice, there you go. Three on your left side. Slow to move it back, take your time. If you need a break, drop down, take your break. We move in, we got two more left to go. Two on your right side, there you go. Step it back, other side, two. Step it back, last one on your right side. Step it all the way forward, squeeze, bring it back. Take it to the opposite side, let's go. Walk it forward, and then we drop it back. Nicely done today. Give yourself a round of applause, clap it out, whatever you got, give it to you. If someone's in the room, shoot them a shot of an elbow, shoot them a smile, make them feel good about it. We move into exercise number five this time. We are down on the ground. We're gonna go the opposite of the way that we just did, and then we're gonna pick it up. You're gonna get both feet nice and flat. You're gonna turn those hands and fingertips away from your bottom side. Bridge up nice and easy. From here, we're gonna walk from the front of our mat, like a crab, and then move it back up towards the back of the mat. So step it back, take your time, walking yourself all the way over. Take it back, take it back, take it back. From there, pause, and now let's walk forward as we crab it all the way up. Nicely done. Take a quick breather. We go for the second time. Remember, both feet are flat, fingertips are away from that body. We bridge up, squeeze. From here, let's walk back again. Take your time as you move your hands and your feet in a nice pattern, almost like a crab, under the seat, or at the beach if you've ever been. And then from there, we walk it all the way back up. Squeeze, take your time. And then we take it to the top. We set it down. We've got one more of those to go. One more big one. This is your best one. This one's gonna feel like home because you've done it twice. Third time is the charm. So as we bridge up, remember, we're smiling. We're crabs on the beach as we walk it back. Take your time, easing it back. You feel all of your body starting to wake up as you walk it back. You take a quick pause. From here, we move it all the way back forward. This time around, making it all the way back. We find our time in this tan just to sit down. And then we keep rolling. That was five, we're moving right into six. Six is a combination of five as well, right? So we're gonna bridge up into that crab that we just did. Remembering from here, find your balance. We're gonna take that right hand off of the ground and we're gonna connect with that right toe. Bring it back down, back into your crab. Come back up, set it up, and bring it down. Remember, if that's too much for you from here, you're just gonna take it, keep your butt down on the ground, reach towards your toe, and then we put it back. Today, we come up. We stay up as long as we can. We've got 10 in total, so five on each side. From here, right hand, right toe, hold, take it back. Left hand, right toe, hold, Take it back. We move, this is eight. Nice. Seven, there you go. Nice, Fab Labyrinth. Six, I see you out there. Five, keep it rolling. This is four, here we go. Three, we got two more. Two, and then that last one, swing that hand up nice and big, tap that toe, and ease it all the way back down. Nice job, folks. We keep rolling today. We're gonna come up for a nice stand, so get yourself up. This is where we shake it out. Add a little bit of bounce to it. Wiggle those arms, they're a little bit tight from those crabs. Shake that leg out. We go into exercise number seven of 16 today. We've got jumping jacks coming your way. Remember, this is where we smile, we let it loose, and we have a good time. We count it out, we've got 20 of these coming your way. Arms are gonna come all the way, feet are in. Arms are gonna come all the way up, and we're gonna bring it back. We count it up today just to make it smooth, just to make it happy as a big group. Let's start to move. We take it up. Let's go. One, two, three, four. There you go. Five, you're looking good. Six, seven, come on. Eight, almost halfway. Nine and 10, halfway. Let's go. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Nice job, that felt so good. Let's do it one more time, let's repeat it. We'll go another 20, just cause that felt good and it got your body moving and you should be feeling good as we roll through it. We roll into it one more time, we pick it up, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Oh, eleven, I'm sorry, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Fab Labs, you gotta keep me accountable. Sometimes I lose my count. Coach Ace loses his count sometimes as we get ready to move on. That was seven, that was seven. We move on to the eighth one today. We got hip bridges coming your way. You're gonna sit it down. We're gonna get both feet nice and flat. You're gonna lay it back. Take all 10 of your fingertips today. Make a connection with that ground. Relax your neck. From here, you're gonna squeeze and drive yourself up one long line and then let it come all the way back down. Take it all the way up. And then we slow to let it come back down. We take it for 20 of those just to get it going up. We're gonna work the back sides of our legs for the first time today as we get ready to go. Drive it up. We've got one. Nice. Two. There you go. Three. Four. Hold steady. Five. Looking good out there. Six. Seven. Look up at the ceiling. Eight. Nine. 10, halfway, 10 more to go. 11, there you go. 12, 13, 14, 15, five to go. 16, 17, 18, 19, last one, we hold it at the top, we'll count it out, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two and one, let it come all the way down. Rock and roll till you get yourself to a seated position. We stay down on the ground for this one. We're gonna go into a series of what I like to call plank toe touches. It's very easy, we go right to that tabletop that we've done several times. This time around though, we're gonna take it to a high plank. So you're gonna walk your legs all the way back. From here, stabilize yourself. Remember, if you have to drop it down to the ground, that will be your option today. From here, you take that toe, take it away from the body with your right leg. Bring it back in. We move that left leg out. We pop it back in again. We go out with the right, bring it back. We go out with the left, bring it back. Remember, if you're on your knees, all I want you to do is tap your foot up, take that knee back, tap your foot up, bring that knee back. We all go, we count them out, 20 touches, we move on to the next one. High plank, bridge it up. Let's go, ladies, gentlemen, fab lapis, let's get it. One, bring it back. Two, bring it back. Three, looking good, I see you. Four, nice. Five, six, seven, there you go. Eight, nine, 10, halfway, let's keep rolling. 11, push through. 12, 13, 14, 15, there you go. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Nicely done. Give yourselves a round of applause. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to work up a sweat pad lavish. Coach Ace is going to move you right to the next exercise. We're moving on to number 10 this time around. 10 of 16 coming your way. The same thing we just did. This time around, though, we're going to take it right to our forearms. You're going to set yourself up. Palms come up towards the sky and walk those legs back. And from here, we're going to hold it all the way down. Bring those hips down. Remember your option this time around is just to drop down to your knees. We've got a wonderful 10 count. When the 10 count is over, we move on. So from here, we bridge up, take your time, we start to count. We've got 10. There you go, slowing it down on the count. Nine, remember you're supposed to breathe through this and let it happen. Eight, there you go. Seven, feeling good about it. Six, I see you. Five, come on, four, Three, you're starting to shake, hold it, hold it, hold it. Two, you got it, come on. Last second, we got it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and let it go. Nicely done. We move right into this same position. We're gonna move into number 11 of 16. You've got push-ups coming your way. Almost like the same position that we already had. We can turn sideways or we'll turn front. Walk your legs all the way back. From here, you're gonna drop your chest down to the ground, and then you're gonna squeeze and bring yourself up. As an option, drop down to your knees this time around. Take yourself all the way down, and then bring yourself all the way back up. I'll do the first half with you. 
Stand it up, and then I'll do the second half just to drop down to my knees and show you what it feels like. You can do the same with me, or you can choose to do however variation you want to. Take it all the way out, high plank position, walk those legs back. We drop our chest down, bring it back up. That's one, come on. Drop it down. That's two, feeling it, let's go. Drop it down, bring it back up. That's three. We keep rolling, drop it down. Nice and done, fat lapis. That's four, one more. Drop it down, bring it up, that's five. Now we drop down to our knees, we keep that same motion going. We got six through 10 coming your way. Take it all the way down, squeeze. Bring it back, that's six. Take it all the way down, bring it back up to the top for seven, there you go. Drop it all the way down, that's eight. Come on, two more to go, all the way down. That's nine, wonderful. And we got one more to go. Break it all the way down and then squeeze it and push yourself all the way back up to the top. Nicely done for that 10. That was 11 workout exercises done. We're moving on to the 12th one this time around. We turn sideways one more time. What I'd like for you to do is stack your feet up, take that arm in hand, pull everything into one long line. From here, we're gonna stay down on the ground. We're gonna just slowly take your hand on your hip, lift your leg up, and then slowly let it come down. We're gonna take it to 20 of these on your left side, and then we'll swap and do 20 on the right side. So from here, slowly bring it up. That's one, two, nice, there you go. Three, four, I see you today. Five, six, seven, there you go, Fab Levers. Let's go, eight, nine, there you go. 10, we're halfway through it. We've got 11, nice. 12, I see you. 13, feel it. 14, 15, there you go. 16, 17, it's burning. 18, 19, and 20. Shake it out, shake that leg out. We just do a quick little roll around. We swap to the opposite side. We got the same thing happening. We'll go right into our 20 count. Smile, feel good about it. Here we go. We pick that leg up. We go one, nice. Two, there you go. Three, bring it up, take it back down. Four, five, you feel it all the way up the side. Six, nice. Seven, eight, nine, and 10, halfway, we keep rolling. 11, there you go. 12, nice. 13, 14, there you go. 15, 16, 17, 18, two more to go. 19, and that last one, big one, 20. Nicely done but we keep it rolling. We stay down in the same position. Swap it back almost like we're gonna do the other side. We're gonna take it to a side plank. We've got a 10 count coming your way. You're gonna take both feet, stack it up, take that same weight you had in that first arm. The only difference is we're gonna lift that hip up off the ground. Take this free hand, put it on your hip. We're gonna hold for a count of 10. There you go. Nine, remember to keep that hip up. Eight, I see you out there. Seven, six, let's go. Join on him, Coach Ace. Five, four, I see you. Three, looking good today. Two, hold it for one more. And one, drop your hip down. Swing those legs back around one more time. We take it to the opposite side. Take those feet, stack them up. Remember, if you can't do the stack up, just make them go opposite. One in the front, one in the back, and you do the same bridge up this time around. It feels the same way we're working the same body parts. 10 count, 10, hold it, nine. Remember to breathe through the whole process as well. Eight, seven, let your hands go all the way out, don't clench them. Six, five, you got it. Four, looking good out there. Three, two, and one. Drop it back down, settle into it. This time around, we're gonna come up and off the ground. We spent a lot of time on the ground. So now we bring it back up just to light it back up just to get that heart rate back up. We got squat jumps coming your way. Remember that normal squat is, we take it to this position and we just drive it down. But with that squat jump, we add a jump to it at the end, Fab Labyrinth. So from here, you bring it all the way down, you squeeze, and you bring it all the way back up. So keep that in mind. We're gonna take it to a wonderful 10 sets, 10 reps of that, and we keep going this time around. Feet are shoulder width apart, drop those hips down, blast up. One, reset. Hips drop down, here we go, blast up. Two, nicely done. We're going into number three, reset. 
hips all the way down, squeeze and get it back up. Three, take it down. This time around, I want you to leap towards your ceiling, leap, 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 leap. That's four, nice, there you go. We're moving into it, we're almost to that halfway point. Leap, check it up. Five, shake it up just a little bit. We're going into number six. Jump, jump, jump. Six, there you go. Remember, we're getting a little bit higher every time. Seven, come on. Eight, there you go, we got two more to go. Here comes number nine, jump, jump, jump. Nine, and then that last one, we're gonna go as big as we can. Biggest one you got, highest jump you got. Take it up, take it up, and 10. Nice job, round of applause for yourself. That was exercise number 14, two more to go. We're taking it down to the ground for a mountain climber to get yourself going. So we ease back into that wonderful tabletop that we made ourselves go. Remember, your back is almost flat. We can set a plate on your back because it feels so good. From here, walk those legs back. We're gonna drive our knee up to our chest, take it back, knee up to our chest. The only difference is we speed it up. We've got 20 of these coming your way. You're gonna drive your knees out. I wanna hear you count them out nice and loud because we're getting closer to the end and I want you to keep that same energy, that same excitement. Let's get ready to light it up and let's roll. We drive it up, let's drive those knees. One, two, three, there you go. Four, count it out. Five, six, seven, eight. Keep your butt down. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. 15 of your 16 exercises now behind you. We're moving on to that last exercise. We're gonna take it right to a bicycle sit-up just to work your core. You're gonna lay it down on your back. Let those legs, we got an upside down tabletop this time around. The only difference is take those hands, put them behind your head. We're gonna drive it all the way out. Right elbow, left knee. Bring it back, take your time. This time around, left elbow, right knee. We bring it back. We've got 10 big ones coming to you for this one. Get ready to rock and roll. Get ready to bring it home as we close out our 16th exercise of the day. Take your hands behind your head. Bring those knees up. We go together as one big group. Extend and take it all the way out. That's one. Pop it back to the opposite side. Reach forward. Two. Bring it back. Opposite side. Three. Nicely done. I see you. Opposite side. Four. Bring it back. Easing right into it. Number five. Smile, smile, smile. Pop it back. Number six. There you go. Come on. Number seven. Wonderful. Here we go. Fat lap is number eight. Here we go. Number nine. Squeeze. And with that last one, knock it out. Number 10. Wonderful. Rock and roll, folks. Nicely done. We made it through 16 of 16 exercises. We had a warm up and now it's time for a quick cool down. We're gonna do this cool down. Nice and easy, so stand it up. Same way we came in is the same way we go out. We shake that right arm out. Shake that left arm out. Make it big, shake both arms out. Shake that right leg out. Shake that left leg out. We add that bounce just to get our bodies flowing just to make it nice and fluid. And as we slowly slow it down, rotate those arms forward a couple times. Nice, big movements, big movements. Reverse that order. Big movement back. Take it again. We've got tiny movements towards the front. Just rotating your fingertips, rotating your hands, palms up, palms down, palms back, palms forward, nicely done. Take that knee. Bring it up towards your chest. Find your balance. Squeeze big for a count of four, three, two, one. Take it down. We bring it up again. Squeeze that knee for a count of four, three, two, and one. Same thing. Take that leg up. Pull that heel to the back of your butt. Bring that knee in nice and tight. We count it out for four, three, two, and one. Nice job, folks. Opposite leg. Let's go, Fab Labs. We're closing it out nice and easy. Bring that knee in for four, three, two, and one. And for the last thing we do, we're gonna take it around the world one more time for one more big stretch. Slight bend in your knees. Bring those hands in to touch. Look at that ground from here. We're gonna bring it all the way up. Sit into it. As you come all the way up, squeeze all the way to the top. Tap those fingertips, wiggle them out. 
and then we take it back down. Let's make it one more, just for a big one. One more, last big one, all the way up. Bring it all the way around the world. Squeeze to the top, cap those fingertips, and we let it go. Nice job on this active hour, folks. We're gonna go meet crazy Aunt Lindsay in the lunchbox and see what's in there. Hope you had a good time today. one. Today, instead of a sandwich or a salad, we're going to make Fab Lab Galaxy Smoothies. If you were tuned into us at the first part of the show, then you know the Fab Lab project of the day was our Fab Lab Star Jar Night Lights Two Ways, uh, an inspired project by our Women of the Month, Mae Jameson, an incredible astronaut uh, who has gone up to space and made history by being the first black woman to do so. Thank you so much for the partnership with PDX Women in Technology for bringing that one to you live. Now, so because we talked all about astronauts and amazing women in space, I'm feeling very inspired to do a very special smoothie. So I just, I'm gonna do my Fab Lab Galaxy smoothie. I just finished blending my uh, first layer, my Milky Way layer <laughs> of my smoothie. It's gonna be so beautiful, I can't wait to show you. All this is, if you have um, these things on hand, all you're going to need is some milk of choice and or yogurt, as well as blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, whatever you have on hand, plus some ice and a glass. And if you wanna make this extra special, like I'm going to, maybe some spinach or kale, bok choy, even a cucumber, any, any vegetable that you don't love eating, but know you have to. So grab the, those things and then I'm gonna walk you through what we're going to do next. So as I told you, we just finished our first layer. You can do this with a big fancy blender like I have, or you can do it with a hand blender, like a nice little uh, kitchen counter bullet blender. I That's what I normally use. Um, so don't be intimidated if you don't have a regular blender. And if you have a hand blender, the kind you stick into a glass, sometimes our parents have them on hand for pureed soups, uh, you can use that one too. So I'm gonna use this blender, a hand blender, um, or even a counter blender is perfect for, for this. So for the Milky Way layer, all you're gonna do is add a cup of ice and a cup of milk of your choice. I just used a little bit of coconut milk. Okay, so now that I'm done with that part, I'm going to grab my glass. Oh. I'm gonna put it in a mason jar because I think that this smoothie is gonna be kind of giant, but you can put it in a regular glass too. And I'm using a giant one because this is gonna be my lunch. I'm gonna have this for lunch. Sometimes I don't feel like having a whole meal. Perfect, so here's my Milky Way layer to my blender. Oh, excuse me, to my smoothie. And I washed my hands, as always. And now I'm gonna go back to my blender, and I'm gonna pop in my red berries. So like I said, this is the Galaxy uh, smoothie, and there are gonna be three layers my Milky Way layer, my Supernova Red layer, and my Black Hole Blue layer. It's gonna be beautiful! I can't wait for you to try this at home. So, I just did my Milky Way layer, just two ingredients, equal parts, milk of your choice, or yogurt, and ice. Now we're moving on to our raspberry, uh, our Supernova, Supernova Red Raspberry layer. So, 
I picked out my red berries. I've got about a cup of raspberries here, but you can use strawberries. Um, you could even use um, just sort of like the lighter, like if your blackberries aren't too, 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 too dark, like these have a bit of a red sheen to them, you could use these. I just separated them out because I want my supernova layer to be really red. Okay, so then I'm going to do a, just some, a cup of red raspberries. To this, I'm going to add just a little pinch of honey. Sorry, my eyes are old. Just a little pinch of honey. About a teaspoon or tablespoon, depends on what you like. And then I'm going to grab my milk of choice. I'm going to use yogurt for this layer. For the first layer, I use a little bit of coconut milk. For this layer, I'm gonna use equal parts. So about a cup of each. I'm gonna start with a half a cup, actually. I'm gonna start with just a half a cup of yogurt. Yogurt is a great source of protein. Yep, great source of protein. And after workouts, you for sure want tons of protein. So I'm gonna pop this over. So this is about a teaspoon of honey and about a cup of raspberries. And this is about a cup, a half a cup of yogurt. And I'm just gonna go back over to my blender. I'm gonna plop in the yogurt and I'm gonna plop in the raspberries. Okay, I'm gonna put that right over onto the side. I'm gonna stick it up here. I'm gonna grab my top. Oops. Making a little bit of a mess. Oh well. <laughs> Alrighty. And then I'm going to blend. Cover your ears if you have sensitive ears. <laughs> so super thick I might need a little bit of help I'm going to grab a fat lab spatula of course if you are a kiddo and you're using a big giant kitchen blender like I'm using as opposed to a hand blender definitely make sure you have some parental supervision or the support of an adult like a like a bigger sibling so I'm going to Press this aside for just a second. And I'm gonna pull out my blade just to make it a little bit easier, a little safer. And I'm just gonna rest this in this bowl for one second. So I can use my blender safely, or my Fab Lab spatula, to get my supernova layer out. And it's gonna go right into my Milky Way layer. Ah, that looks so beautiful. Look at how beautiful this is. Perfect. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just set this aside for a second, and I'm just going to swirl it a little bit. Do you see how all the colors are just mixing and mixing? I'm gonna grab a little butter knife and get them swirling. Look at how beautiful that is. You see how the white is coming through, the Milky Way layer is coming through and mixing with the beautiful stark white. Look at how beautiful that looks from the side. Ooh. Now I'm gonna do my last layer, which is going to be my black hole layer. So for this, I'm going to oh, finish putting some of this in there, there's a little bit left over. Beautiful. Okay, perfect. So, I'm gonna set this to the side, put that up. Now I'm going to do some similar. It'll be equal-ish parts milk of choice. In this case, I'm gonna do a half a cup of yogurt, just, just shy of a half a cup of yogurt. 
And this can totally be split. If you haven't had anything to eat all day and you really worked up uh, an appetite, this is gonna be perfect for one adult. So this can totally be split into a couple of kiddos, at least two or three servings with this specific recipe. Uh, and just poured, poured in the same layer uh, order that I'm doing for a nice galaxy effect. So here's just shy of half a cup of yogurt. And then to this I'm going to add a little bit of almond milk. Just a touch. Perfect. Just a touch to help loosen it up. I'm going to add a bit of honey just about a tea or tablespoon. You could also use good old sugar if you like. I prefer raw honey and everything. It makes me feel healthier. <laughs> okay, and to this I'm going to add just, this is just about less than a cup of blueberries. And to fill it in, I'm gonna add just a few of my blackberries. Perfect. Good job. And now I'm gonna go back, oh, and you know what else I'm gonna add to this? A little bit of lemon, our Fab Lab knife, good knife skills. Press that to the side. Just a good squeeze, do your best not to get the seed in. Just a good squeeze for this. And like I mentioned, if you're a kiddo that doesn't love to eat your vegetables and you know you have to and you want a super enjoyable way to do it in a really high protein way that's gonna be great for energy, I am not that person. I love all vegetables, but one of my favorite things to do is add a little secret nutrition to everything. So I'm gonna add some spinach to my dark layer. So if you're making this for a sibling or for a kiddo that doesn't love vegetables, this is a great way to sneak in all the vegetables that they might possibly need. So I'm just gonna stick it all in there. Oh, I forgot to put my blender back in. So I'm gonna to have to figure out how to do this. Okay. That's gonna be fine. <laughs> We're gonna hope for the best. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm gonna pop my top back on like so, and I'm gonna go over to the blender. And I'm gonna blend. I'm going to get my two layers that I've already done and I'm going to pour in my beautiful black hole layer. So nice. Whoa! Nice! Set that aside. If I have a straw, I'll use my straw, but I don't have a straw, so I'm just going to use my beautiful, beautiful butter knife to make swirls and what 
what galaxy would be complete without a little bit of intergalactic edible glitter? So I'm gonna quickly make a little bit of edible glitter to finish off my beautiful galaxy smoothie. And for that, for edible glitter, all that I need is some sugar. This is about two tablespoons of sugar and your favorite food coloring. I'm going to use purple. And all I'm gonna do is put in a couple of drops of my favorite color food coloring. I'm gonna do purple and then you're just gonna mix it up. That's all you're gonna do. I'm gonna use a toothpick and see if a toothpick, how far a toothpick will get me. Okay, let's see here. Maybe I'll use a bigger spoon because I have a teeny tiny spoon. Hold on one second. Yes, espresso spoons come in so handy in the Fab Lab. <laughs> oh, perfect. So I'm just making a little edible glitter with my sugar and just one or two drops of my favorite color food coloring. Oh, look at how beautiful this is. You could even do a couple of different colors of your favorite edible glitter. Just choose away. You could do blue and purple. I'm just gonna stick with purple. And now I'm gonna take my Galaxy Smoothie and I'm gonna sprinkle my edible glitter on top. So beautiful. Set that aside. And then I'm gonna add a few blackberries on top just to finish it off. There you have it. A beautiful intergalactic Fab Lab lunch smoothie. I hope that you enjoyed this project and I hope, and I just wanna say thank you so much for watching the Fab Lab Digital Daycare. I hope you've been enjoying all of the recipes, all of the projects, all of the story times. I'm super stoked to finish up my lunch and see you back here at 1.30 for the afternoon session where we will hang out with one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, Liz Heineke, author of Kitchen Pantry Science, one of my favorite sisters in STEM. So make sure you come back right here to Facebook Live well, we will pick up the afternoon session after our lunch. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and your make sure your parents are signed up for the nightly newsletter where you can get all of the recipes and uh, printables that you need to do these projects over and over again. Enjoy your lunch. See you at 1.30. to be here with you for part two of Fab Lab Digital Daycare. Why am I so excited? Yes, because I'm normally excited. That is very, very true. Crazy Aunt Lindsay is thrilled to be here with you every single day for the next couple of weeks. But today is extra special. We're going to catch up with one of my favorite sister in STEM friends, Liz Heineke. Liz Heineke, not only is she an awesome mom, she's also a microbiologist, but also she has written an incredible series of some of my favorite books in STEM. The Kitchen Pantry series. She's got one on edible stuff. She's got another one that's themed after Star Wars. I mean, you name it, she has done it. She's got a new book coming up uh, just about, I think in May is when the next book comes out, May 4th or so, The uh, Chemistry for Kids. I absolutely love everything that she does and I'm super stoked that she hopped on the phone with me last night all the way from Minnesota, Missouri, Montana. I never remember, I think it's Minnesota. Uh, she's absolutely beautiful. She's hanging out with her sweet and precious daughter, Sarah, who I have known digitally since she was really, really young. Now she's a teenager, so it's just really fun to catch up with my friend Liz, and I'm super excited to bring a very special chemistry project to you guys, and I can't wait to show you. Here we go. Hey guys, welcome to the Digital Daycare. We are in an awesome and super special community class. I have invited one of my favorite, favorite authors and sisters in STEM, Liz Heineke. Uh, I, she and I connected, oh gosh, on Facebook or Twitter via a mutual Twitter friend, Danielle Lee. She tagged me in something that uh, Liz posted and I just 
fell absolutely in love ever since Liz every year. Yes, you heard me right. Every year Liz has produced or published a book. She has sent me one. This is the last one that she sent me. It's called Edible Edition. Uh, she has an incredible line of specifically kitchen science books that I am totally in love with. If you have been watching the Fab Lab, you already know that so many of our projects are super inspired by a lot of the things that she has done. Uh, and this is the first time we've ever been able to do something together. And I'm super excited because she is just an amazing lady. Uh, and we've been Twitter friends for so long. And I'm just super stoked that she's going to be here with us. She has a new book coming out, but when I say she has a bajillion books, I literally mean it. I have an entire shelf dedicated to just kitchen science books by Liz Heineke, and I'm so excited to introduce her to all of you. She, we're visited with her. She's coming in from Missouri, M Montana. Minnesota, Minnesota, you're close. Starts with an M. <laughs> Minnesota and her gorgeous, gorgeous daughter, who is right around 14 now, but when I first met her, she was just about uh, the age of most of you, uh, and she has blossomed into this beautiful young lady, young lady, and I'm so happy to see her. So thank you, Liz, and thank you, Sarah, for joining us. Well, we are super excited. Hi, Fab Labbers. Um, <laughs> Crazy Aunt, Aunt Lindsay is one of my favorite educators online and anywhere. So we're really excited to be on your show. And um, today we are going to do a chemical reaction. And um, I am a scientist besides being an author. I'm a microbiologist, which means I study organisms that can only be seen under a microscope, like bacteria and viruses and fungi. Um, and I've written a lot of books about experiments you can do using things you have around the house. So that's one experiment we're going to do today. And um, my new book. I'm sorry to interrupt you. What year did your first book come out? My first book came out in 2014. Oh my gosh, 2014. Yeah. Okay, so the Fab Lab started in 2010. So okay, that makes that now I yep totally okay cool. I thought I thought we've been doing this the same amount of time. Cool. Oh no, well I've been doing it longer than that, like online stuff. But that's just when my first book came out. And um, my, my new books I'm writing, this is my newest book, Chemistry for Kids, and I'm writing one called Biology for Kids right now, and um, I've talked to our friend Danielle Lee, and hopefully she's going to be one of the scientists that I feature in my Biology for Kids book. So there are fabulous scientists all around the world. There have been for a long time, and it's really fun um, to tell their stories and then to do experiments related to their work. So today's project from, um, from this book is a chemistry project that um, shows us how a man named Joseph Priestley, a long time ago, about what, 200, over 200 years ago, first created carbonated water. So if you like drinking bubbly water, he's the guy that came up with this idea. Oh, I'm uh, J James Priestley? Uh, Joseph Priestley, yes. Joseph Priestley. Joseph awesome. Priestley. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> and Joseph Priestley loved science when he was a kid. And he used to do things like catching bugs and putting them in jars. And the, the experiments he did as a kid actually inspired him as an adult when he was a scientist. And they led him to like one of his greatest discoveries, which was how to isolate oxygen out of the air. So he's like wow. a fascinating, really important scientist, but he also figured out how to make carbonated water, which he called soda water. So today I'm, we're gonna do um, an experiment and make carbon dioxide gas, and then we are going to bubble it through some water so kids can see sort of how he did this process way back Ooh. over 200 years ago. 200 years ago. Yeah. So we're talking like, Soda that you get at the grocery store, LaCroix, uh, exactly. um, bubbly, oh wow, Perrier, okay. so yes. chemistry, cool, cool, cool. Yes, so what makes the bubbles in, in water and soda is carbon dioxide gas, and carbon dioxide is one of the gases that we can find in our atmosphere, right? So one way to make carbon dioxide, dioxide gas is by combining an acid and a base. And you have an acid and a base in your kitchen that work great to make bubbles. So everyone knows what this is, right? Vinegar. Acetic acid. Yep, exactly. People pronounce it differently. I pronounce it acetic acid, but the acetic, acetic but people like people pronounce it differently. Um, but this is one kitchen chemical and it tastes sour, right? 
vinegar is used to make pickles. They make you pucker up. So this, and, and citric acid and lemons, which you've probably talked about on your show, also taste sour, right? So acids mm -hmm. tend to taste sour. So this is one of the chemicals we're gonna use in our reaction. Very cool. Baking soda is also called sodium bicarbonate. Oh, you have a big bag. You just have a little we, bag. We, we use a lot, we use a lot of this in the fab lab. <laughs> I have one of those in my basement. I just bought the little box today. <laughs> um, but, um, and it's used for making big things puff up, right? And one reason that it does that is because it produces, when you're baking things, it produces carbon dioxide bubbles. Okay, so here's the fun part. For this experiment, you need an empty bottle. Yay. You need a balloon. Yay. <laughs> you need a spoon. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and a baking soda and vinegar. I got them! Yay! <laughs> okay, and this is awesome because you don't need a test tube or fancy equipment to do science, right? This is All our right. test tube today. So Sarah's going to help me with this. Um, we are going to pour about half a cup of vinegar into our bottle. Okay. You don't have to measure it. You can just... Uh, if you cook a lot like I do, you can just guess. If you're doing this at home, you can measure like a, yep. An a empty plastic bottle. In There's a little bit of water in it here. In here. Just dump out okay? the water. Yep, there you so go. It's just like, you see how it's just like. Oh, that's, like, that's, that's fine. Yep. Different. Okay. So okay. And vinegar is acetic acid and it's acetic acid. It already has a lot of water in it. It's diluted. So ah. that's a good science word too, dilution. That just means it has. It's not very strong. So we are going to pour some vinegar into our bottle, which is our test tube. All right. Does it, you said about how full? Uh, maybe just for yours, maybe a fourth. That's good. That should be plenty. Here? OK. Yep. Yeah. OK. Now, we want to keep the baking soda separate from the vinegar until we start our chemical reaction. So we are going to put our baking soda in a separate container, which is our balloon. So I'm going to have, you have some in yours. I'm going to have Sarah hold this open for me. Or, or do you want to hold it open or have the baking soda? I'll have the baking okay. soda. Okay. We're going to add about two spoonfuls of baking soda to our balloon. It's okay. pretty hard. You have to be pretty strong. But I know that crazy Aunt Lindsay is super strong, and she's already added the baking soda to her. <laughs> it's too bad. It's too bad that the camera on my end isn't bigger because like we could have totally you shown can demonstrate. The <laughs> and then you shake it all the way down to the bottom of the balloon. So can you feel that? Sarah sometimes likes to uh, fill balloons up with with baking soda or cornstarch to make stress balls. It's another fun project. <laughs> oh my gosh! Make, like making like an oobleck or just the just dry. Either right? Do you put water in it too? I don't know. She, does, she just uh, experiments with different fillings. So, Sarah, you're going to come on next week and you'll do that project with us? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next thing we are going to do is, Sarah, I'm going to have you hold this. We are going to carefully put the lip of the balloon, that's this top edge, over the top of the bottle so that it covers it. But we don't want the baking soda and the vinegar to mix yet. We're going to keep them separate. Okay, hold on. Perfect. All right, don't shake it in yet. Oh, wait. Okay, I, I almost did it. I almost did it. I almost did it. Okay, now we're going to put on our, do you have any safety glasses or? I sure do. Hold on. Great. Be right back. Go, yeah, go, go. Keep I will keep, okay, keep talking. <laughs> and we wear safety goggles or just, these are just computer glasses because vinegar is, a mild, it's acetic acid, right? It's a mild acid. And if you splash it in your eyes, um, it can sting your eyes. Those are some sweet glasses, Sarah. I know. <laughs> so also, if for some reason, and this has happened before, if for some reason the balloon shoots off of the bottle and it splashes in your face, it won't sting your eyes. So put on some, we have some goggles. Nice. Those are, those are better. Okay. And pink. Those are awesome. Yeah, look at Sarah's though. Hers are pretty sweet too. I love them. Very cool. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to pick up our bottle and we are going to start our chemical reaction. Now, 
all a chemical reaction is when you mix some things together and you make some new things, right? So we're mixing together what, Sarah? And, and what are we going to make? A chemical reaction? Yeah, but what's carbon dioxide gas, right? Yeah. Carbon dioxide gas is the product of our chemical reaction. And lots of times when chemical reactions are happening, you can see bubbles. You can feel a temperature change, like you can see a color change, right? So we are going to like look for things that we notice when we're doing this. Okay, so pinch the bot, pinch the balloon on the bottle with one hand. See this? Yep. So it won't shoot off. And then Sarah's going to shake. Go ahead and shake all of the baking soda into the vinegar. So we're starting our chemical reaction. <gasps> is going to explode? <laughs> Bubbles in there? <laughs> is it going to explode? It might. <laughs> you, can, you can take it off. You can try to kind of peel it off now if you want. Or you can leave it on there. Oh, it's not going to explode. <laughs> it, it might, it might not. You should try to take it off. <laughs> it didn't explode, yay. Okay. Okay, now you can tie it. Or I have these nifty little clamps here. Is this still really cold? Is it supposed to be super That's cold? That's what I Yep, feel the bottle and feel the balloon. How does it feel, Sarah? Does it feel warm or cold? Cold. Okay. It feels our, really cold. Our wow. part of the day is endothermic. And endo endothermic. Endothermic. And thermic means heat. Endothermic reactions use heat, so they feel cold. If you have a reaction that feels hot, some reactions feel hot, that's called an exothermic reaction. So those are two fun words that you can learn to say. Okay. Those will be, those will be the, fab, the, the Fab Lab vocab words of the day. Awesome. Endothermic and exothermic. Awesome. So the reason the balloon blows up, and I'm going to have Sarah like fill up several more balloons while I'm talking to you. She's just going to do this. The reason, okay, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and start it. The reason the balloons blow up is because we're making carbon dioxide gas, right? And the gas mm -hmm. has nowhere to go, right? So it gets trapped in the balloon. And then mm -hmm. it, it pushes out the rubber in the balloon to make it blow up. All right, so we're going to clip this one now. We're doing a bunch of these because we are going to bubble this carbon dioxide gas through the water. Oh, it's still going. Uh-oh, I, <laughs> I might blow one up. I'm using my super strong fingers to do it again, too. <laughs> All right, we're going to blow up a bunch of these. If you do this at home, it's really fun. So be sure to like set up to do a couple. This is so, so, so fun. And can I use the same vinegar pack, the same vinegar one? Yep. Sometimes you have to rinse it out. Be just dump it out because the baking soda in there will, that's left in there will start to react with more vinegar when you add it. So you I can just pour it out and I can see some fizzing. Yeah, yeah. It should still Very work cool. though. I always tell people like, I don't know, try it, right? That's what's <laughs> great about doing science at home. If you have a question like that, if you say, can I do it again? I don't know. Just try it and see what happens. <laughs> cool. Okay. It's also a great idea to do science, and you probably talk about this, like do science on a cookie sheet or a tray with a rim. So if it spills all over, it just gets, it collects it. We have we have some um, pretty absorbent, we have like butcher type paper down, but it's like more absorbent. That's nice. Yeah, this next part we're going to do is a little bit messy. So, okay. So we have four balloons now. And these balloons are full of them. Oh, yeah, see? So this is, I should tell you something else. This is the same as the volcano reaction. So another fun experiment you can do is use these little bottles and put like a paper bag or a coffee filter over them. Put vinegar in them and then make a volcano cone and do the same reaction only. I love it. Okay. Okay, so we yeah, on, you can see that one. On, on Monday, on Monday's episode of the of digital daycare, we did um what do we call them? We called them uh blaster bo blaster bags. Oh, what what we so we just we we put baking soda inside a tissue and folded it up. And then we put vinegar. We put vinegar inside of one of these bags, and then we stuff in the. And then we turn that into um, dishwashing dishwashing tabs and toilet bowl tabs. 
like for cleaning. Oh, cool. That's super. Yeah. Cool. I love that idea. It's so fun. Science. I mean, it's, it's similar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is that a bigger balloon? No, it's just a dip. It's just opaque. Oh my gosh. That's it's, awesome. like, it's pretty. It's like, <laughs> I want some balloons oh. like that. I want some Fab Lab balloons. Those are so pretty. Oh. I'll, I'll send you some. You send me books all the time. I'll send you some balloons. <laughs> okay, so what we are going to do next is we are going to carbonate some water like Joseph Priestley did. And I should have double checked the year that he did this. I'm going to just show you the chapter. Let's see. I can show you a picture of Joseph Priestley from this book. I have this amazing illustrator who um, has drawn all of these scientists for me. Let's see. Aha. This is so great. Can you see this? Oh, if I, yeah. I can, it's beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful, yeah. So that's Joseph Priestley. And um, we have 25 scientists in this book. And there are a ton of, um, there are probably more than half of them are women scientists. But it's really cool. You can see how um, as time has gone on through history, science has become more and more accessible to to everyone rather than just, you know, when it first started, it was just a bunch of like rich old men, but now everyone's doing science. So it's really great. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, so now we're going to um, carbonate this water. So you could do this with like, a, a, this is just like a refrigerator water holder, but you know, you can buy big like um, ice tea jars that have these little spigots too. Yeah, like, you picnics, with, like the kind you, for picnics. Yeah, so you could do this with any kind of container that has a spigot and a lid. You have to um, loosen the lid because when we put the carbon dioxide up into this water, it's going to push this air out. So you have to loosen the lid so the air can come out. Okay. Air is going to hold this. Okay, so this is cool. I'm going to keep this closed. These, remember, these balloons are full of carbon dioxide gas, right? So I'm going to put this over the spigot. I'm going to try to. Maybe I should have done it before I took the thing off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now when I open this up, the gas, you're going to tilt it this way a little. The gas is going to bubble up through the water. Whoop. It blew the lid off. See that? So what we're trying to do, though, is kind of trap the carbon dioxide gas in here. And the, let's tilt it even a little more. Can we tilt it like that? Oh. <laughs> You definitely need two people to do this. Okay, now we're gonna tighten the lid to trap the gas in here, right? And then she's gonna rock it back and forth. And this works better with cold water than warm water because cold water, okay. like this, cold water yeah. dissolves gas better than warm water. Mm -hmm. But you need a lot of carbon dioxide gas. So that's why we blew up lots of balloons. Okay, and now we're gonna do it again. Oh, so you're just going to you're just going to reverse it. <laughs> that would be good, so well. Yeah, so we just so we just keep adding more and more carbon dioxide. Oh, it works better if you like these are just like little chip bag clamps, you know. So I'm gonna loosen this. Uh -huh. I'm gonna bubble this up. We're bubbling the carbon dioxide gas through the water. And you can just do this with like a bunch of balloons. And the, it's so much fun to inflate the balloons that like you can do like a ton of them. And then we tighten the lid. Oh, it's still going. And, and so while you do that, I'm just going to recap the steps. So I'm going to do <laughs> my baking soda vinegar balloon. So we're going to yeah. mix some baking soda into, we're going to put some baking soda into a, a, an empty balloon, a flaccid balloon. And then we're going to pour some um, vinegar into a empty water bottle. And then we're going to capture the carbon dioxide gas yes. inside of our balloon and, and sort of loosely tie it or, t or with clamps or something, which is what you use. Yep. And then we're going to use a container that has a spigot uh, yep. and we're going to just put the, the rim of the balloon over the spigot and reverse yep. it into the container. Awesome. And that's going to carbonate our water. And then you rock it back and forth. You repeat it a bunch of times. Yeah. And like I said, it works better with cold water. Gas. 
The gas, the carbon, oh, we have another one. The carbon dioxide, you do it, Sarah, let's switch spot. The carbon dioxide gas dissolves yeah, in the water. Sarah. So, okay, I would, oh, yeah, there you go. Do you want to clamp? Uh, it's okay, I got it. Okay, she's good. I'll probably mess up now because I'm, okay, I'm gonna loosen the lid. <laughs> okay. If you're just tuning in, uh, I'm Crazy Aunt Lindsay with the Fab Lab Digital Daycare, and we're hanging out with my sister in STEM, Liz Heineke, and we are making carbonated water, the kind that you get from cans at the store like LaCroix and Bubbly and all sorts of other uh, amazing cans of drinking of soda, including the ones that you can get just like in regular old bottles that are full of sugar and caramel flavoring and colors and stuff like that but ours is going to be water uh and we're <laughs> and we're and we're and we're celebrating uh james priestley jason joseph, priestley joseph priestley yes joseph, yeah. <laughs> joseph priestley who is the inventor of carbonated water when he was a young boy uh he was super obsessed with science and grew up to uh, create soda water, which we all love uh, to drink to this very day. And we're making it right now. Should we have on digital daycare with my girl, Liz Heineke and her gorgeous daughter, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just looking for a glass to see if we could taste it. Okay. okay so, yeah. So, um, yeah. And you don't have to carbonate water. You could also just do this part of the experiment because it's tons of fun. And I would recommend using about, oh, thank you, Sarah. Like maybe about, uh, a, when you first do it, maybe about a fourth cup vinegar and two teaspoons of baking soda. Okay, okay let's try it. Uh, it might not be very carbonated it yet. Bubbly. Okay. It looks bubbly. Ah, I don't know. Taste it, see. We usually do a lot more rocking and bubble it. Seems like it's been sitting out oh like flat it, she said it tastes like flat bubbly water but it, well, we're close about how so how much you said you usually do more rocking how much rocking do you normally do we usually just add some and then just rock it maybe 10 times or 20 times and then do another balloon you can also add a little less liquid so it doesn't take so much to carbonate it but it's, oh. it's an experiment. Yeah, you know, if you use a, it might be easier if you have a smaller container with a spigot, it might go a lot faster, but, you know, use what you have. <laughs> I absolutely love this project, and I think we're going to try and do it here in the Fab Lab. We're going to do a, another recipe. Can this be done with other flavors? Like, can we do it with juice, or do we have to do it with water? Oh, absolutely. You could do it with, with anything. And if it's not carbonated enough, as you know, you could add a little more baking soda and amp up carbonation if there's some citric acid in there. Ooh, okay. It's the same, it's the same reaction, mixing baking soda with an acid. It can be vinegar, it can be citric acid, but you're making these carbon dioxide bubbles. So it's awesome. awesome. I'm so excited. Liz, thank you so much for joining us on this very special live stream event of the Fab Lab called the Digital Daycare. I love, love, love all of your books. When can we expect to see Chemistry for Kids? May 4th, maybe a little earlier. So it's, it's on sale. Yep, it's on sale now everywhere books are sold. So you can, you can grab a copy before they sell out. Um, you can, can pre-order pre it. You can pre-order pre it now, yep. I'll show you the cover again. It's, I'm, I'm so excited. This, it's the stories of 25 fabulous scientists from past to present and then each each scientist story is paired up with an experiment that's related to what work the scientist was doing. So, yeah. I can't wait to read it. I cannot <laughs> wait to read it at all. Uh, it kind of, yeah, we have, we have, we just have so much in common. I just, I just love. love I know. I'm just so did. excited. We finally got to do something together. This was so much fun. Thank you for Me having too. us on Crazy Aunt Lindsay. No, thank you. Thank you for coming. And I'm not even kidding. I want you back next week. I, when we'll do something from the Edible Kitchen oh. Edition. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> countless other books that I have. All right, Fab Labbers, next up, we're going to go into, I don't know, coloring or active hour. Who knows? Stay tuned. <laughs> Put the water on hot, hot, put some salt.
soap on your hands. On your hands. You gotta wash your hands a whole lot. Whole lot. Keep a clean hands is the plan. That's plan. Now rinse them. Give them a shake. Do the shake. Dry your hands. I said dry your hands. Wash your hands and don't touch your face. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much again to my awesome sister in STEM friend, Liz Heinke, author, author of Kitchen Pantry Science. Uh, stay tuned for more from her. She already said that she'll be back next week, so I can't wait to see what she have for us here in the Fab Lab then. All right, so now you know what time it is, guys. It is time for coloring and fun here in the Fab Lab. So grab your favorite coloring book, go and grab your favorite puzzle, if you have a journal, go grab that. If you have markers, crayons, your pencil pouch, whatever you have, I want you to go wash your hands, grab those, thing, those things, and then come meet me back right here where I'm going to do another puzzle from the PuzzleHuddle.com series of puzzles and games that they sent me. I'm super excited. Last week with Miss Maria, who's gonna be with us tomorrow with more Spanish here in uh, the community class for tomorrow. So make sure you come back to Spanish class to see Miss, Miss Maria. Last week we did the Future Scientist puzzle, these adorable 42 piece puzzles. I absolutely love them. We did the Future Scientist, so we're not gonna do that one. Um, but we have two left. Yesterday was National Doctor Day, so shout out to all of the doctors and healthcare workers. Thank you so much for being so awesome right now and just being who you are. We could not be in this world and healthy and amazing without you. So happy national, happy belated National Doctor Day. Um, so I would love to do my doctor, but in honor of our astronaut, um, I think we're gonna do the future engineer puzzle today. Uh, and then we'll save this one for another day. Actually, Mae Jameson, what's your doctor? I think we're gonna do May Jane. We're, we are going to do future doctor because she was a doctor. Why not? <laughs> I'll leave these here so you can have a, a, a good look at them. Um, and then we're gonna do future doctor in honor of May Jameson and in honor of yesterday's National Doctor Day. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my puzzle and you know what? I think I'm gonna do it upside down. It'll be upside down to me, but it'll be right side up for you in the overhead. So I'm gonna put this here on the end uh, so we can take a look at what the final product should look like. I'm gonna spill out my puzzle pieces. And of course, and as always, whenever we are coloring or doing puzzles together, we have a couple of questions for us to think about. If you went and got your journal, you can journal this, uh, the answers. If you don't have a journal, if you um, don't quite know how to write yet, that's totally okay. You can think them in your mind and share them with your parents and your family over dinner tonight. Uh, or you can just shout them out loud to me. I can't hear you, but I hear you in my heart and that's what matters. <laughs> um, so the first question of the day is, what makes you feel smart? What makes me feel smart? Let's see. You know, I think anytime I can solve a problem in a really creative way, that's what helps me to feel smart on any given, any given day. Uh, you know, feeling smart is such an interesting sensation. I think for so many of us, especially as we're growing and getting older, we don't know a lot of things, but the truth is, is that adults don't know everything. I don't know everything. Uh, as a matter of fact, how I got into the Fab Lab, how I got into doing uh, STEM and science with all of you is I didn't know a lot about science. I was just really interested in it. And because I started using things like Google and magazines and bookstores to do research in my personal time for fun, I got to discover so much more about science and technology, engineering, math, how they came to be, um, different, different ways that they helped me think about other areas of the world like cooking. Uh, and yeah, so in a lot of ways, STEM itself, anything that's science, technology, engineering, and math related makes me feel really smart. 
but also using that information to solve problems in new ways that nobody has ever done before or, in a, or getting something to work that didn't work before just by using my creative mental power, that makes me feel really smart. So I would love to hear what makes you feel smart. While I do my fab lab technique of identifying the corners of my puzzle before I get started and then Again, I'm making my future doctor, and I can see these big, beautiful eyes. Oh, and I just put together my first piece of the puzzle. Are you guys doing a puzzle? I would love to know what you guys are working on today in your quiet, creative, and coloring fun time. I'm doing a puzzlehuddle.com puzzle while we're chatting about our chat out loud questions. The first chat out loud question, if you are just joining us, is what makes you feel smart? Awesome. Oh, is that going to go there? Oh, no. Okay. And I think it's a good time for my next question. How were you helpful today? You know, just because we're all kind of stuck at home doesn't mean that we can't be helpful around the house. If you tuned into yesterday's project, we made our Fab Lab bath, excuse me, Fab Lab dishwasher and toilet bowl blasters to help make uh, doing chores a little bit more fun and super scientific. We also packaged them up just this morning after they dried so we could gift them to friends and neighbors. But I bet our parents would absolutely love it if we helped them around the house now that we're all kind of hanging out together, working together, schooling together, working together. Uh, parents, I think I, I let you in on a little secret yesterday. Parents need all the help that they can get, believe me. <laughs> awesome. So we've got a little bit of the puzzle kind of together already. Oh, I just found some. I would love to see what coloring book or what puzzle you guys are working in today. And if you're journaling, I want you to be thinking about the first two questions of our day. The first one, if you're still on it or if you're just joining us, is what makes you feel smart? This is a prompt that you can put in your journal or you can think in your mind and share with your family and friends over dinner tonight. Or you can be doing a puzzle, a coloring book with me. This is just our little wind down for the day while I do a puzzle. And again, my beautiful puzzle is from puzzlehuddle.com. I just love that puzzle company. It's a husband and wife team. They've got a couple of kids who are totally fab lab kids. They love they love the show and I love that they love the show. I think Mike is one of the founders, so shout out to you, Mike. Thank you so much for sending me these puzzle huddle puzzles of future doctors, scientists, and engineers. I have another one. It's a small 15-piece one. Maybe we'll save that for next week. And I'm just putting my puzzle together. Looking for all of the pieces. Ooh, there we go. Ooh, I'm seeing some purple. How I like to, how I like to do, my, my puzzle strategy is to look for things that look similar. And then see if they fit. So in this case, I'm seeing a couple of purple pieces. Ooh. Awesome. Oh, mm, is this going to fit? Not quite. I'm going to look for another purple piece. Not sure that that's quite it yet. Awesome. How are you guys doing? How are you ladies and gentlemen doing? Awesome. This. Ooh, I just finished, I just plopped in a corner piece. Ah, 
Nice. I love puzzles. If you're just joining us, we are doing our Fab Lab quiet coloring and fun. Today, for our, um, for our quiet time, we're doing a puzzle, but you can totally use your favorite coloring book. If you don't have a coloring book, you can grab uh, some notebook paper. If you have a journal, we've got some journal prompts on the screen for you. The first journal prompt was, what makes you feel smart? The second journal prompt, which we're still on, is how were you helpful today? And if you have not been helpful yet, that's okay. There's still plenty of time in the day for you to be helpful around the house or in your neighborhood. And I would love for you to brainstorm ways that you can be helpful today. And you can do that in your journal while we work on our puzzle. Okay. Again, this adorable puzzle is from Puddle Huzzle, Puddle, PuzzleHuddle.com. They've sent me these beautiful puzzles, like maybe once or twice a year they'll send them to me and I've been looking for an opportunity to play with them. They're, they come in really handy in the Fab Lab anytime we have kids on set and they just need a little something to do. But this is the first time I'm ever showing them to you and I'm very excited because they're just so fun. The perfect way to wind down on a day before story time coming up next. And I've got a special book for you, which I can't wait to share. But I would love to know how you're spending your puzzle time, your coloring and quiet time. If you're doing a puzzle, I would love for your parents to send me uh, a picture and tag me in it on Instagram, at the Fab Lab HQ. And they can also tweet it to me, at Aunt Lindsay, on Twitter. This is, right, this, this is the right way looking at me. I'm doing it upside down <laughs> so that you guys can see what we're making. I'll turn, it, I'll turn it around when we're all finished. But I would love to see what puzzle or what coloring pages you guys are working in today. This is what we're using. Ah, what do you know? I think I'm really good at puzzles, guys. What do you think? Am I good at puzzles? Are you good at puzzles? That's a more important question, I think. Puzzles are a great way to just wind down. And I would be very, very excited to see what you're working on in your quiet coloring and fun time. If you've got a puzzle going, if you're writing in your journal, if you're in a coloring book, yesterday we did a hand lettering. But those are just the idea, those are just a few of the things that I'm doing. You are free to spend this time however you like. I'm making a puzzle today, tomorrow maybe it'll be coloring. It's raining in Portland. What else is new? <laughs> hmm. Ah, I just found two pieces that fit together beautifully. Ah, I bet this goes nearby. give you to you all another journal prompt or chat out loud question if you could name yourself what would you name yourself would you change your name would you keep it I would love to know that if you could name yourself what would you name yourself I'll tell you a little a little a little family secret when I was about to be born, my parents could not decide what they wanted to name me. One of the names that my parents thought about naming me was Heidi, which is 
totally not my name, Heidi. Another name was Mackenzie. And then another name was Lindsay. And the year that I was born, I won't tell you what year, but if your parents are watching, they might know, there was a tennis player that won, I think, the US Open or Wimbledon. And my uncle Sonny, my uncle Sonny boy, he was there and helped deliver me because my dad was working and my uncle was close, closest to the hospital. So my uncle got to the hospital before my dad and he had just seen Lindsay, a tennis player, win a really important tennis match. And so when I popped out, <laughs> he said, Kim, which is my mom's name, you should name her Lindsay because Lindsay's a winner. <laughs> That's how I ended up with the name Lindsay. But my uh, several many years later, when I was in my 20s, my sister Hillary had my niece, Mackenzie. And she named my niece Mackenzie because that was one of the names that my parents were thinking about naming me. And my sister and I are very, very close, and my niece and I are very, very close. And so she has one of the names that I could have possibly been. And on top of that, I will say that had if I had the choice to name myself, I love my name, Lindsay. I absolutely love it. But I would have gone with Mackenzie. That's my second favorite name for, for a girl. So that's what I would have named myself. But my, my niece already has it, so that's okay. <laughs> Do any of you know the story about how you ended up with your name? And if you don't, Maybe tonight is a great night over dinner to ask your parents how they came up with your name and share with them the name you would name yourself if you could, if you got to choose your own name. And I would love to know what name you would name yourself. So have your parents leave a comment in the Facebook section if they're comfortable with sharing. Okay. I'm just gonna do a few more pieces while you all think about the next, for those three questions, the first one, what makes you feel smart? The second one is, how are you helpful today? And the third one, which we're all thinking about right now, is if we could name ourselves, what would we have named ourselves? Would we keep our name? Would we come up with a new name? I told you the story about how I ended up being named Lindsay, AKA Aunt Lindsay. <laughs> Okay, ah, did I find a piece that fits? I did, yay. I hope you all are coloring with me or coming up with, or working on a puzzle. This is your own free time. We're just sharing our free time together. solving problems and I think that's one of the one of the reasons why I like puzzles just going back to our first question what makes me feel smart it makes me feel smart when I can solve problems in a really creative way and I think that working on puzzles helps us solve problems in a creative way it, it helps us to see the many pieces of a story and then make our minds work to put them together. And I have a feeling, a sneaking suspicion, that that lends itself to everyday life. So I love to do puzzles to help keep my mind sharp. Except I don't get to do nearly as many puzzles as I would like to, day to day. But because we're all spending time together in our isolation period, we suddenly have more time to do things that we didn't, didn't before. And so that's a blessing. I think it's a pretty, pretty awesome blessing to be able to be at home with our, with our families. And if you're not at home with your families, maybe you're calling them on the phone, checking in on them, making sure they're doing well. Especially if you have grandparents, make sure you're checking in on your grandparents over the phone, making sure they know that you love them and you're thinking about them. Maybe use some of the skills that you, you learned yesterday to write a letter to them. Now is an amazing time to get some pen pals. I have a pen pal, my Aunt Nao, 
who is in her 80s and has been writing me letters every single birthday and every month for a lot of years. Let's see here. Ah, this puzzle is coming together beautifully. Oh, I like this so much. Are you all working on your puzzle? Are you coloring? Are you puzzling and coloring? <laughs> There's no wrong way to puzzle or color. You can do all of them. You can even change your mind. If you start doing one thing, you can go on to, the, to another thing. Awesome. Oh, I'm getting very excited. It feels like, feels like we're almost done. We just have a few more pieces that need to find their homes. Let's see here. Is this a puzzle piece? Mm. Mm. Oh, oh, is that a puzzle It sure is. I am very, very excited. I feel very close to the finish line. And you know what that means, it's almost time for story time. <gasps> okay, we're almost there. We're almost, almost there. Two, three more pieces. Okay, oh goodness. This is so great. Alrighty, finish. I hope you're almost finished with your uh, journal prompt, your chat out loud journal prompts, because I'm just about finished with my puzzle. One last piece. Let's see here. All done. Awesome. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see it in its right way. We did the future doctor in honor of the last day of Women's History Month, but Women's History is all the time history the last day of Women's History Month and yesterday's National Doctor Day. How great this puzzle that we did was a 42 piece future doctor piece from PuzzleHuddle.com. Thank you PuzzleHuddle.com for sending us all these adorable puzzles that we get to share. And now I'm going to clean up and meet you in the Fab Lab Library for Fab Lab Storytime. See you in a sec. <laughs> Wash your hands, everybody. Wash your hands to the beat. Wash your hands, everybody. Wash your hands with me. First, put the water on hot. Hot. Put some soap on your hands. On your hands. Gotta wash your hands a whole lot. Whole lot. Keep a clean hands is the plan. That's plan. Now rinse them. Give them a shake. Do the shake. Dry your hands. I said dry your hands. Wash your hands and don't touch your face. Well, hello and welcome to the Fab Lab Digital Daycare Storytime right here in the Fab Lab Library. So, yesterday we finished up chapter two of A Wrinkle in Time, but today we have a very special book just for you and for me and for all of us. Now, as mentioned, today is March 31st. It's the last day of Women's History Month, even though women's history is all the time history. And I thought that right now would be a really wonderful time to share with you one of my favorite new books from one of my favorite people on the whole earth ever. I don't know if you've heard about A Kid's Book About yet. A Kid's Book About is a very special book series. I will leave a link down below in the Facebook comment section. And if you're watching the replay on YouTube, I will have a link that will go directly to the A Kid's Book About uh, website where you can see the entire library of books that they have in the YouTube description box. So make sure you check out the Facebook comments if you're watching live right now or the YouTube description box if you are just joining us on the replay. So A Kid's Book About is an awesome new kids book series that helps adults and parents have really difficult conversations on some 
tough subject matter with their kids. Uh, it's amazing. They've got books on anxiety. They've got books on divorce. They've even got a free book series on the COVID-19 uh, virus that we're sort of experiencing together right now. They've got more than 20 titles on tough topics to help parents and adults have difficult conversations or have easier conversations on difficult topics. It's one of my favorite new series and I hope that you'll check it out. Again, click the link down below and you, it'll take you directly to um, to the library of books at akidsbookabout.com. The one that I have today is A Kid's Book About Feminism, written by my dear friend Emma McIlroy, a Portland local female-founded uh, business owner of Wild Fang, the amazing uh, feminist oriented uh, clothing line that I absolutely love. Uh, I will make sure that I link to her awesome, awesome TEDx Portland talk that she did uh, about four years ago. That's actually how I met her. She and I both are in the TEDx Portland uh, TED family. So shout out to TEDx Portland. Um, I'll link to her awesome talk uh, where she talks about how she discovered or thought she discovered a dinosaur bone in the backyard of her, her lawn and how that really, that experience um, sort of encouraged her to become the incredibly dynamic woman that she is today. It's one of my favorite TED Talks uh, of all time. But instead of the TED Talk, I've got this incredible book that she helped write for the A Kid's Book About series on feminism. And I'm gonna read the A Kid's Book About Feminism book to you right now by my friend, Emma McIlroy. Okay. So, I mean, just it feel this book feels amazing. Like I said, you can click the link in both the YouTube replay and in the Facebook live comments. So make sure you check that out. Awesome. Alrighty, a kid's book about feminism by Emma McGilroy. Intro. When you hear a little boy say, boys are better than girls, it's more than just a frivolous statement. We are so conditioned to sexism that we sometimes forget it exists at all or act like it's harmless, but it's not. So how do we change this? Believe it or not, feminism is the answer. I know the F word can sound really intimidating, but this book is on a mission to make feminism not only accessible to every girl and boy, but also something they can aspire to embrace. Buckle up, and hopefully by the end of this book, you'll call yourself a feminist too. My name is Emma. Not my name, Emma's name. <laughs> my name is Emma. I'm from Belfast, a city on the top part of Ireland. I wish I had an Irish accent. <laughs> I'm a CEO. I'm a woman and I'm a feminist. Feminism is super cool. And guess what? You can be a feminist too. And if you choose to be one, you can change the world. Some people think feminism is scary. Some people think only women can be feminists. Some people think feminists don't like boys, but that's not true. It's definitely not true. <laughs> Feminism is the belief that everyone is equal, no matter what their gender is. One, feminists believe everybody should be treated the same way. Two, feminists believe that just because you're a girl, does not mean you are less valuable. Three, feminists believe everybody should have the same opportunities. Four, feminists want the world to be a better place for everyone. Do you agree? Sometimes people treat girls differently, right? Some people think girls can't do math, aren't good at science, should be skinny, always look pretty, can't be doctors, have to get married, should make less money. 
Some people think that boys are better, stronger, smarter, faster, and more capable. But that is nonsense. Bonkers, bananas. <laughs> Let me tell you the truth. Girls can win the World Cup. Ask Megan Rapinoe. Girls can run big companies like Pepsi. You ever heard of that? And Xerox and New Seasons. <laughs> and living room realty, and, 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 and rain agency. <laughs> Girls can win Nobel Prizes, like Malala at 17 years old. Girls can be president, like in Brazil and in Ireland. It's super important you're a feminist too, even if you're not a girl. Because there are so many things that have to change. Like when you hear someone say, only boys can, or that's not for girls, or girls can't, or boys are better at, remember, none of that is true. And tell them that you know a girl who won the Nobel Prize. And ladies, be yourself, accept yourself, love yourself, and appreciate yourself because we think you're awesome. I'm a feminist and I want to fight for all women, no matter what color their skin is, which country they're from, who they choose to love, what body parts they have, how much money they make, or what they choose to wear. Because when we fight for everyone and give them the same opportunities, the world gets better for all of us. All right. That was pretty intense, huh? Good, because treating everyone equally is a pretty intense matter. Everyone is equal, so everyone should be treated equally. Even if you believe, and if you believe that, guess what? You're a feminist. I'd like to be the first to welcome you and any kiddo that you have into the club. You're a part of a movement that's made up of fellow rascals, rule breakers, think outside of the boxers, and world changers. The only criteria for belonging is believing that everyone should be treated equally. Whatever you do, don't let that belief stop with this book. Bring it with you everywhere you go because you know the same thing that I do that everyone is equal. Thank you, Emma McElroy, for writing this awesome book. And thank you to the A Kid's Book About series for making it super easy and so much fun to have tougher conversations with kids of all ages. If you'd like to check this book series out, please make sure you click the link in the Facebook comments right now, or making sure you check out the description box in the YouTube replay for a very special link to the A Kid's Book About website from me to you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow in the Fab Lab Digital Daycare. Bye.